Hey, physics fans, welcome back. This is on Frictional Forces. This is our lesson number, I think it's, what, number six in our forces package here, forces. And there's a handout there, and you've already downloaded the handout, hopefully, or at least you could pause the video and read it, because I'm not going to read this for you. There's a whole great paragraph or two here on normal force, and then the force of friction is often very misunderstood force. We're going to be talking about it. There's static friction that resists it from starting to slide. Kinetic friction, which opposes the sliding motion once it's going. Okay, there's other types of forces, but we're going to just rattle on through here quickly. Okay. So, the frictional force formula is one that we'll emphasize quite a bit. But it's this one. Force of friction is equal to a constant called mu. And this is a coefficient of friction. It's a Greek letter, mu, mu, times the normal force. The normal force is how hard the two surfaces are being pushed together. And it's a perpendicular force to the surface. And that is it. In physics 11, though, most of our surfaces, I mean it, most of our surfaces are flat. We won't be doing any inclines or very little of them. We'll be talking about that at that point special. So at that point, we can say that this normal force is just going to be the force of gravity because what's up is the normal and what's going down on this object is the gravity. And they have to balance because it's moving this way. So up and down have to equal zero. So this is just going to be mg. So in f you're safe, pretty darn safe, to say that the force of friction equals mu mg and use this formula for only physics 11. Physics 11 only. And hey, you're in physics 11. This mu is a unitless. I mean, there's no units. It's just a number. And it's usually between 0 and 1. It can be a little bit higher than 1 and stuff like that. But uh, and it tells you how sticky the surfaces are or how rough they are. Let's start using it right away and trying to figure it out. So frictional forces. A uh, 70 kilogram player, hockey player, is skating on steel skates. What is the force of friction on ice? So there's uh, the normal force and the force of gravity. And the force of gravity equals mg. And they have to balance. And if he's sliding along, okay, he's sliding along, then this is the frictional force. And frictional force is just going to be mu mg. And steel on ice is 0 0.03, a really small number. Okay, not as much as that rubberized, uh, Vulcan rubberized uh, hockey pucks, a little less. So, but it's 0 0.03. The mass is 70 kilograms. And the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So we pull up our calculator. It's a big one still. Got to get used to that. And it's point oh three times 70 times... 9.8 and that's 20.58 and that's the frictional force that opposes his sliding uh, uh, the driver of a 1500 kilogram 1500 kilogram car puts on the brakes skids with locked tires so that means they're actually sliding These are moving surfaces, and on a concrete road. Calculate the force of friction A on a dry road, wet road, and icy road. So the force of friction is equal to mu mg, which is going to equal mu on a dry road, a rubber tire on dry concrete, 0.68, times the mass, 1,500, times 9.8, and then we're going to do it again on wet, so the mu will be 
1,500 and 9.8. And this is going to equal the icy road on ice, rubber tire on ice, 0.15. You save time, just pause the video there and unpause it while I do all the calculations. These are the answers. So the force of friction that opposes the motion while you're sliding, in other words, you're trying to stop, decreases as it goes from dry road to wet road to icy road, and we know that. But these are the nice numbers. So question number three on the back, and I'm lucky enough to have be able to do it this way. It says, calculate the stopping distance for the cars traveling at 54 kilometers an hour with each of the following road conditions. So it's uh, 54, right? So 54 divided by 3.6 has a speed of 15 meters per second. Okay, so the car is traveling this way at a speed, but it's trying to slow down, so the acceleration is this way. There's a normal force up, force of gravity down, there's only one force trying to stop it, and that's the frictional force that way. There's nothing that keeps it moving in a constant direction because of Newton's first law. As long as in a straight line, it's inertia. there's no force that's necessary. So frictional force is the only one that's trying to stop it. So sum of the forces equals F net equals MA, and that's the force of friction is equal to MA. Let's not skip that step. So the sum of the forces is equal to F net equals MA, Newton's second law. That's the only force, so the force of friction is equal to MA. So that means mu MG is equal to MA. Now, you can cancel out the masses because it doesn't matter the mass of the vehicle. It really doesn't. But if you ha if you don't if you cancel out the masses, you'll never have the net force, and we have the net forces here. So this is what we're going to use this net force. So that net force is equal to uh, is the frictional force is equal to m a. So it's nine 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 six is equal to fifteen hundred kilograms times a. And then our eight two eight five two six is equal to fifteen hundred kilograms times a, and two two o five is equal to fifteen hundred kilograms times a. That's just this number, which is what we have up here. Boom 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 is equal to m a m a. So calculating the accelerations for each of these. And then once you have the accelerations, then you just you have the VF is equal to zero. VI is equal to fifteen. The A is what we're calculating three different ways. And we need the distance. And so we'll go VF squared is equal to VI squared plus two AD. And that 0 is equal to vi, which is 15 squared, plus 2 times the a that we will have calculated. All these a's, I'll put them in red. a, and then we have to calculate the d. So we go 15 squared divided by the a that we calculated, and divided by 2, and that's equal to d. And we'll get these stopping distances. So on dry, We'll get 16.88, ice uh, wet 19.76, and on ice whew, three quarters of a football field. Okay, and a tractor plowing a field. With the force of 800 newtons, uh, 100 kilogram plow. What's the coefficient of friction? 
so pulling. So, so he's pulling with a force, and that's 880 newtons. Not a free body diagram. Um, and obviously something is resisting it, and that's going to be a frictional force. So that means these two forces have to be equal, because there's not talk, no talk about an acceleration here. He's pulling it along the field. So that means force of friction is equal to 880 newtons. So force of friction is equal to mu mg, plugging in 9.8 and 100 kilograms. You can get mu and you get 0.8980. Okay, great.